After finishing Mouse, I remember a part of me being like, you know, I had it all figured out. And if I had to make a video part, I could do it really quick. I know everything. I, I, it was just one of those points where it's like, you're super young, you don't know everything, and you think you know everything. You feel like you've succeeded, so you kind of just like let your guard down. That happened. And I just kind of like faded out. We go to Barcelona on a girl trip. And this is like, I've kind of been out of it for a little while. And Ty Evans comes on the trip. And now like on our girl trips, they used to just be full of party. You know what I mean? And so I noticed right in the beginning of this trip, it's like skate spot, skate spot, skate spot. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on, man? Like this guy, like he's just got everybody at skate spots nonstop. You know what I mean? And that was like my first introduction to Ty and how Ty works, you know what I mean? I wouldn't see that again until we started working on Fully Flare. When I look back at it now, and because obviously at the time, like I wasn't caring, so I just wasn't, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But when I look back at it now, it's like, yeah, right, was such a great video. I think like out of all Ty's like girl films, it's like, this was like the Goodfellas. And I was so bummed I missed out on it. It hurt me because I think that like, that could have been some of my best years and they were missed out, you know what I mean? And I wish I could have been in there with those guys. When I came back, Rick and Mike were like, you know, we want to give you an opportunity to skate and, you know, film a video part and do whatever you want. I had just got through a time in my life where it was like all about me showing up and just being willing. And that was like the motto I was going to live by, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then right away, I'm faced with someone giving me this huge opportunity that I'm super fearful of. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck it, this is it, man. You gotta go for it, man. It's everything that like, you know, people are suggesting you do, so why don't you just like take a chance and go with it. Being hooked up with Ty Evans changed the game for me. You know what I mean? Because Ty was someone that did not let me settle for less. I remember the first day we got in the van, I'm like, dude, I'll do a couple tricks for this video. And he's like, I'm not putting this video out until you have a full part. And I remember being so upset by just the stubbornness of him, you know what I mean? Like, why won't he just let me do what I want to do? I just barely want to be in this thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he never backed down. It was his drive and passion that carried me through that video. I had like my little dark period, and then I get back into skateboarding, and the only place that I'm skating is uh, Jason Hernandez Ledges with Gino Iannucci. And then like, you know, I find out about the barracks. This is before the barracks is even around, but it's Eric and Steve skate park. And so the barracks was the first time where I had a place where like I can learn how to skate again. When I have that like opening intro shot and fully flared with like the gates like open up and it's like me standing there, like that meant a little bit more to me because of that situation. Once I finally got that dedication to like set in that I was gonna do this video part, it was on. And I think that I definitely transferred my addiction of drugs and alcohol into skateboarding. And it's a very scary thing because I sometimes will base the quality of my life based around how I'm skating. If I'm skating good, Life's great, my relationship's great, and everything else around me is great. But when the skating's not going good, it could get pretty dark. And it could be an extremely dangerous thing because skateboarding comes in waves, man. And you have to realize that, man, there's gonna be ups and there's gonna be downs. You know, the interesting thing about Fully Flared is like, I think by the time I had got on, like some of the people had full parts already. Like I think Brandon Beeble was pretty much done. Like Mark Johnson already had like 10 minutes worth of footage. So I was coming in really late. One of the greatest things that happened during the filming of Fully Flared is I met Brandon Beeble. I was always cool with like the older dudes, you know what I mean? Because I grew up with them. But like Brandon Beeble was one of the younger guys on the team. And I just remember Beeble being like super open and cool about everything, man. Like taking me in, letting me into his house. And I know we traveled a lot during that video, but the big chunk of that video was filmed in Sacramento. Me and Mike Mo would like fly up there for the weekend and like try to get clips. Mike Mo must have been 15 at the time. I was probably like 30, so he was probably like half my age. And uh, this is his first video part, you know what I mean? And it was strange at the time because when I got on, I was like already old in my career, you know what I mean? Like trying to make this like kind of comeback. And where these guys were at, like they were at the top of their game. You know, those younger guys accepting me and really taking me in like that, it like really changed things for me and it made me feel part of the team, you know? My last trick in Fully Flared, like you see I do that 270 tail slide and it's like that handshake with Brandon Beeble. I think Ty edited that because he knew that bond that was created with all of us. 
when it comes to like picking like you know clips and music for like video parts sometimes like I try to give a little bit of input but I try to stay out of it because like I play my position man I'm a skater these guys have been making videos and putting songs to edits for like a while that's like their strong point just because a trick took me seven days to do in four hours a piece, I'm gonna want that in there, whether it's sketchy or not. And sometimes you gotta let the authority like pull that out. You got too much emotional stuff wrapped up in these tricks to be like judging what goes in and out. So I like to give them as much creative like play as possible. I remember being at the premiere because you don't get to see the whole video before it comes out. You know, you're watching it at the premiere just like everybody else. And I remember watching this video and all of our hard work on the screen. I mean, there's nothing like it. Like, I definitely like was like, man, I hope I don't choke up inside this theater. Because it meant a lot to me. Our first pretty sweet trip, we went to China. You get to China and everything's open. Marble Ledge is going up and down and all this stuff. It's like a playground, man. And it really brings you back to a kid again. One thing you do have to watch out for in China is weather. Because it's either extremely hot or it's raining. And we were out there for two, almost three weeks. It rained every single day. And that was our first trip. I got one clip, I think it was a lip slide on that whoop D ledge, lip slide kick flip. Another trip that really like had a big effect on me was going to Spain. I went out there with uh, Justin, Chris Roberts, and Enrique Lorenzo was our tour guide and our friend and our companion. And he just showed us every amazing spot out there. A lot of that footage and pretty sweet, like came from that Barcelona trip. And it was definitely like one of my best trips. You might look at girl skateboard sometimes and think, okay, girl skateboard, Spike Jones, they got big bucks, millions of dollars, and they just like, you know, it's gonna be very easy. But no, it's not, man. Everything's very guerrilla style. Even when you do a big shoot like the intro shot and pretty sweet, like you'll see people from the warehouse there that are helping out. You know what I mean? It's still very hands on. You know, you see these big videos and you're like, oh, like someone's like, that's Ty and Spike, you know what I mean? And it's just like, no, there's a lot of unseen heroes. Meza, Johannes, people doing graphics, Roger Bagley. He spent a lot of times in like the trenches with me. It's rad when you share that experience with the filmer and you finally land that trick and like you could see the happiness in the filmer's face. You guys both did it. Like, you know, like you gave birth to this like clip, you know what I mean? And that's awesome. Sometimes you see these video parts and you think that it's everything that this guy has. And a lot of times I like to like tell people, it's like these video parts are just unfinished products of like what had came before, you know what I mean? It's like, I've seen guys work on tricks for like three or four videos. The switch tray nose grind, I mean, that was a switch tray nose blunt that I was trying to end my battle commander with. And it wasn't until pretty sweet, like we would actually document this trick. That was a lot of years in between there, like four or five years. I had the Baxo 180 nose grind switch laser for the ender, and uh, everybody knew I wanted the switch tray nose grind. It was the last day to try it. I had some crazy idea because like Eric had did his tray flip nose blunt for yeah right. It was like the last day, like he was up in Santa Barbara and they drove the tape back to Ty and handed it off and it was like in the premiere the next day. I just remember hearing that story and always loving it. And it's like, and I remember calling Eric, I'm like, come down to this rail, man, I want you to be here. To have that like similar experience that Eric had with yeah right, that I felt that I missed out on, but to do it in my own way and have Eric there and be a part of it, it was just, the best feeling ever. Pretty sweet, that's a wrap, baby! This guy. That's a wrap!